What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. If you're new here, my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. I've done videos on where the R versus Python debate stands in 2020 as well as on the Julia programming language. If you miss those videos, the links will be in the description. I've also done a video on why it's important to use or at least be familiar with an open source programming language in the year 2020. Having said all of that, if you're looking for a job, you're probably going to end up seeing SAS in a number of descriptions. So I thought it'd be worth answering the question of, is it still worth learning SAS in the year 2020 if you're a current or aspiring data scientist who's not familiar with it yet? To answer that question, we're going to look at a few things here. So everybody knows that the undisputed juggernauts of the data science world are R and Python. Then there's speculation that in about three to five years from now, Julia might start giving R and Python a run for their money. But we're going to look at how many people are really using SAS right now, in what industries are they using it. Then we're gonna come and look at the relative capabilities of SAS compared to these other languages, speculate on what the future holds for SAS, and then answer that question about, is it worth your investment to learn? First, a little bit of history on SAS. SAS was developed at the North Carolina State University between the years of 1966 and 1976, and since then it's had a ton of different releases. It's proprietary software, meaning it's not open source, so the price of a SAS license can vary substantially based on a number of factors, probably most importantly being, is it for a single user or is it for an enterprise business? So most SAS usage out there is in big business where the cost of a SAS license is just a drop in the bucket. However, there is a SAS University edition which is free and the link to that will be in the description. Next, let's get a feel for how popular SAS is and how many people are using it compared to R and Python. So when I did my R versus Python video back in January, I looked at the Tyobi index, which is a very common metric for assessing the popularity of programming languages at a given point in time. And at that time, Python was the number three most popular programming language based on that list, and R was at number 18. One month later, Python is still number three, and R is at number 13. Although it is important to see that after like number six, a lot of these are super close to each other. And naturally, some of these are very apples to oranges comparisons. Based on this index, Python has 9.345% of search traffic, while R has 1.005% of search traffic. Now by comparison, SAS is in the number 21 spot with 0.656% of search traffic. That's about two-thirds of the volume of searches that R gets. Now granted, it's a little bit of an apples to oranges comparison when we look at R versus Python in this way, because Python is a general purpose programming language. However, R and SAS, I think, is a fairer comparison because they're both predominantly used for data analytics, with academia in particular taking a lot of interest in each of these two languages. So that's cool, but we obviously need to break that down a lot further, right? Now in mid-2019, so pretty recently, Birchworks did a survey of various analytics professionals and data scientists and asked them about their preferences between SAS, R, and Python. The results are very interesting. So this is the six-year trend in survey respondent preference of SAS versus R versus Python. And you'll notice that in 2014 and 2015, it was just a SAS versus R comparison. Then in 2016, Python was added to the survey. And as I talk about in my other video, Python has skyrocketed in popularity while R has fallen slightly. Meanwhile, SAS, though, has fallen directly off a cliff. It had about the preference of 66% of respondents in 2014, but in 2019, it's all the way down at 29%. 
So SAS seems to have lost a lot of popularity in the last few years. Then again, over the exact same time period, data science has exploded in popularity. So let's break this down a little bit by industry and by years of experience, and that should help us get a clearer picture of where things are today and where they're going. This is a breakdown of language preference by industry. It's from the same 2019 Birch Works survey. And as you can see, R and Python beat or are tied with SAS in every single industry. However, professionals in certain industries do seem to prefer SAS much more than they do in others. In particular, in the advertising and marketing sector, 38% of professionals prefer SAS. In the financial services industry, it's 35%. And then in healthcare and pharma, it's 33%. Next, if we look at years of experience, that's even more interesting. Now, among people with 11 years of experience or more, they still use and prefer SAS at very high numbers. However, among people with less than 10 years experience or people who are just college or grad students, virtually nobody is using SAS. All these numbers are at 15% preference or lower. Now this is all really interesting. I do think it's fair to point out that everything I've shown you so far is a percentage during a period where data science and analytics jobs in general have exploded. So let's take a look at the job market. So when you look at data science specific jobs and how often these languages appear in their descriptions, it's a very similar picture. Python appears in about double the number of job descriptions as R does. But then, R still has close to double the number of jobs that SAS does. R seems to appear in about 14,000 job listings, while SAS appears in somewhere around 8,000. It's also down below other technologies such as C, C++, or C Sharp, Hadoop, Tableau, and Spark. So that's all very interesting. Now there are a few big takeaways here. First of all, if you're in an industry like Big Pharma or Big Finance, SAS is still all over the place and there's no way that you're going to be able to avoid it. However, the gap in SAS preference across experience levels is extremely telling. Quite frankly, the new generation is not using SAS very much now and there's not a lot of incentive for them to start when jobs out there don't require it as much as R or Python. So as the new generation starts to become the new leaders, they become directors of analytics or chief technology officers, you could gradually start to see SAS phased out of the industries that it still proliferates. So it really begs the question, how exactly did we get here? Well, for a long time, SAS virtually had a monopoly in the analytics space. And as R and Python, as well as the data science brand in general, really grew starting around 2014, suddenly SAS had a lot of very serious competition to it. I already mentioned, SAS is not free, and in fact, it can be quite expensive. So if you're a newer company that's just getting your foot off the ground in things like big data, analytics, data science, and you don't have to use SAS based on any kind of regulation, you're probably going to pick R or Python, which are free any day of the week over SAS. I don't personally have a ton of experience with SAS myself. I used it a little bit when I was back in school. Also, when I started my job in pharma, I had to start using it a little bit more just because it's everywhere here. And on one level, SAS does have some really nice qualities. You can do virtually any data manipulation task in it quite easily. It's very easy to write SQL code in it, and it's very easy to pick up and learn. However, the visualizations are incredibly subpar and inflexible compared to R or even to Python. SAS also lags behind the open source languages on advanced capabilities like machine learning and deep learning just because when you're proprietary software and not open source, you just don't have that same level of agility. So overall, what's my opinion? Well, if you're interested in government work, or you have interest in the financial or advertising or pharmaceutical sectors, you're probably going to want to learn SAS if you don't know it already. In 2020, it's still everywhere, and frankly, you do need to know it in order to stay competitive. 
If you're just starting out in data science though, if you're domain agnostic, maybe you're interested in startups, honestly, SAS is not anywhere near my top list of things that I would recommend that you learn. SAS's use has been on the decline in the last few years, and with R and Python being where they are now, and a whole new generation of future leaders and analytics professionals are not using it as much, it's really difficult for me to see that trend reversing. Certainly, if you're bored and you've just mastered everything else, or if you do find it popping up in your domain or industry a lot, go ahead, learn it, go for it. But I honestly do think in 2020, for the vast majority of people getting into data science, and especially with things like Julia really catching on right now, there's just a bigger bang for your buck that you can get from learning other things. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you love SAS? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments. Then I'll see you all next time. Until then, Richard, on data.